Hey guys, Doug here from Displace Media. I'm going to be doing a tutorial today on how to do a simple scope view. So I downloaded this texture of a scope outline. The black parts will be able to see through and the white parts will be masked out black. So at the beginning of this we're going to make a new material. We'll call it matte scope. And we're going to go in there and we're going to change the blending mode to translucent so that we can have some transparency in there. Change it to unlit because uh, it won't be affected by the lighting in the scene. Alright, we're going to drag the texture into the material. Alright, now the emissive color is going to be the black part that we don't want to see through. So we're going to get a constant 3 vector. We'll leave it at 0, 0, 0, which will make it black. Now for the opacity, we want to be able to adjust it so that when you zoom in, the uh, border kind of fades in. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out, we're going to get a multiply, attach that to the opacity, and drag out from the B multiply, we're going to get a scalar parameter. Now what this does is it allows us to control the opacity from the HUD or other blueprints. So we're just going to call this scope opacity. Now we want to make sure it's set to a default zero so that way when we start the game it is not visible. We're going to save that material. We're going to go into our My Character Blueprint. So in here we're going to actually animate the zoom of the view. So we're going to get the right mouse button. So when we press on this we're going to have it zoom in. We're going to drag out. We're going to get a timeline. And what this will do is, this actually is the animation portion. Alright, we're going to grab the first person camera that's in the player blueprint. Drag out from there, we're going to do set field of view. Now the field of view, if you don't know, is the angle at which it sees. The default is 90 degrees, and that's how wide you can see. If it's a smaller field of view, like 45 degrees, it's more zoomed in. So double click on the timeline, we're going to make a new float to control the field of view. Now shift click at zero, and set time to zero, and now we're going to set this to 90. Now we want the zoom to be fairly quick, so we'll set the length of the animation to 0.2 seconds. We're going to shift click again, and we're going to set the second keyframe to 45 so that it zooms in. Save that, and now we're going to drag out from the timeline, connect it to the field of view. Now what this will do is it will zoom it in whenever it's pressed, but when it's released we want it to reverse the animation and zoom back out. So let's test this out, and when I right click, it zooms in. Alright, now the last portion is to get the overlay to fade in. So we're going to go to our HUD. Once we get into the HUD blueprint, we need to create a copy of the material that we made so that we can change it in real time. So we're going to create an event begin so that it only creates the copy of the material once. We're going to drag out. I'm going to type in material instance. This will give us the ability to create that copy. And we're going to click the material scope and we want to output it as a variable so that we can access it later. And we will call that variable scope met. From here we need to make a float variable that ties into the opacity of that material. So we're going to click on new variable. I'm going to type in scope opacity. We're going to change that to a float. Now we need to compile it and then we can set that initial scope to zero. All right, now to actually draw that material. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that scope material. We're going to drag out from there. We're going to do set scalar parameter. And if you remember, we typed in scope 
opacity earlier in the material. I'm going to drag out the scope variable that we created within the HUD, tie that in, and we're going to link that up to the main, main stream here. Now the last thing we're going to do is within the HUD. Now the last thing we're going to do within the HUD is we're going to actually draw that material. So we're going to do draw material. And if you don't know anything about UVs, we're just going to set the material U and V to 1. And we need to have this stretch across the whole screen. So for the screen width and the screen height, we're just going to get the screen width that is given to us over here. And it'll automatically convert it from integer to float. And we select our material, which is set as a variable over here. And that should be it for the HUD. The last thing we need to do is actually control the scope opacity. So we're going to go back to the My Character Blueprint, double click on the timeline. We're going to create a new float. Call it scope opacity. And we're going to shift click on 0, 0. So give us our starting animation of having the scope overlay be transparent. We're going to click on time point 0.2 value 1. And that will fade in our scope. All right, next thing we're going to do is type git player controller. Drag out from there. Type get HUD and uncheck context sensitive so it actually shows up. Drag out from there and we're going to type in cast and we have to recheck context sensitive. And we're going to cast my HUD. And what this is going to do is it's going to send the data from the timeline over here to the actual HUD blueprint to change the value of the opacity of the overlay. Last thing we need to do in here is drag out and we're going to type set scope opacity. And this is the variable that is actually in our my HUD blueprint. We're going to connect this to the timeline. All right, now one thing I need to correct is if we go back to my HUD and the material U and the material V, those actually need to be back to zero. And it's the width that needs to be one. Now if we test out our game here, hit play. We right click, hold down, and we have a nice scope zoom in. Anyways, if you'd like to see more tutorials in the future, please go to our website, displacemedia.com, or visit our Twitter page at twitter.com slash displacemedia. Thank you.